confirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in sanctification.
just for living word and talk to hear a word from my own district missionary and talk. I know I'm looking forward to it like I told her. She doesn't ever speak long, but when she speaks, it's powerful. Amen. So I hope that all of us have some open ears Amen. and an open heart to hear and to receive what missionary Duck is going to share with us. But you know, God is a good God. God is a good God. I have to say I'm not feeling the best in my body, but God is still a good God. I'm still breathing. And you know when you think about how many times in one day this heart beats, the breath that we take, it's all done. It is all how the blood flows through our veins. It's Aren't we fearfully and wonderfully baby? You just think about a God. A tiny baby weighing four, five, six, seven, eight pounds. When they're born, growing up to be adults weighing over two, three hundred pounds. God is a good God. Able to feed ourselves. Able to go to the bathroom. You know, some things we take for granted. But God is a good God. <laughs> Walking mighty slow. I told him I'm moving slow, but I'm still moving. And I thank God for being able to move. And I don't take it for granted because, say, some mornings when I wake up, look like my limbs hurt so bad that my lower back, my knees, my ooh, hip, everything just hurt. But God is still God. And sometimes I'm like Mother Pearlie. I just say, Lord, you know my lower back is hurt. And do you know after a while God touches? And I can walk up right, I can go in the kitchen, fix me some breakfast, feed myself, even clean the dishes. <laughs> and I take none of it for granted. Able to wash my own clothes and take my own shower. I'm just thankful. I take none of it for granted because I've been to nursing home, see people laying in beds, don't even know they're in the room, laying there with their mouth just open saying, hell, somebody hell. You know, some things we take so for granted, but God is a good God. And I am truly thankful to be saved. When the Bible says, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? I wouldn't give anything for being saved and sanctified. And of course the songs that may not be the best of anything or have the best, but I know somebody. Oh, I'm glad I know Jesus for myself. Saints, pray much for me because one of these old days when this life is over, I want to see his face in peace. First of all, I'd like to give thanks to God, who is the head of my life, and to his son, Jesus, who is my Lord and personal Savior. I thank the Lord for Pastor Boone, for bringing me to this church every Sunday, that is the Sunday school. Uh, awesome. The guests, the guests, Peppers, I know, I know your name, Peppers. Austin. Awesome. Awesome. I thank the Lord for all of y'all and your wives. But my testimony, hell yeah, I thank the Lord for the children too. Amen. Uh, and all the people out there who hold up this congregation in the house of the Lord today. Uh, I didn't know, I, I had a testimony all, all memorized and everything all through the, through the week. Except I'm gonna switch it up because of the lesson we had this morning. All right, all right. We rejoicing in the Lord. At all times, at all times. Uh, I can remember about, I probably about 28 years old. <clears throat> and uh, I, was at a, I was in my apartment, and every day I used to throw myself a pity party, right? Uh, only few people that showed up was me, myself, and I, 
That was nothing, brother. <laughs> Another, another, fella, another fella that showed up, his name was Why Me. <laughs> Wait a minute, brother. So we sitting up, so I'm up there, I'm up there with these other three, and I'm just a drinking, drinking, and I was just saying, Why Me, Why Me, all the complaining and everything. I wasn't rejoicing in the Lord for nothing because of my situation that I was in. But I thank God for that. That's what we had this morning in Sunday school. Because now, now, I don't have those problems no more. Thank you. I get all.
Praise the Lord. I just want to sing a short song. I could sing it a long time, but I just, this time is far spent. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Hit you, but the other day I was I hadn't had it, and it just hit me. 
But then that song came to me right away. I'm following the one who knows the way. Yes. He's chosen the way before me, and my God makes no mistakes. I'm following the one who knows the way. And I said, Lord, though you try me, I shall come forth as gold. You know that spirit left it, and it has been back since. Grief is of the devil. It's not of God. God knew the way before I even chose that path, but he took care of me and he lifted me up. And I thank him. You know what? I thank him. I wouldn't trade it because I've grown more in the Lord now than I ever have. And I just thank him for the time. I thank him for the years with Deacon Duffy. But I thank him for this time now, and I just know he's got greater yet. testimonies has been going forth because it fit right into the Sunday school lesson today. Rejoice anyway. In spite of what it looked like, in spite of how you feel, in spite of being misunderstood. Habakkuk said, um, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And I thank God for that because he is a mighty God. He is a loving God. He's faithful. He never fails. He never will. He can't. His promises is yay. And they, they, they real. So I thank him. He always amazes me. I thank and praise him. Just I love God on today, and I will continue to love on him because he loved me first. So I thank and praise him for being in this house today, to be in fellowship with you all in my house. You all are family. Hallelujah. And we thank him for just bringing us together. Hallelujah. A lot of our, our, our age um, saints are going on by the way. But we got to take it up, and we got to keep moving forward in that. What they poured into us, we have to remember and do those things that they have taught us. They have been there, and they try to help us. So I thank and praise God for each and every one of you all. God bless. for my, my, my pastor, my big brother. He helped me, help me encourage me to stay in the Lord. All my brother's sister, our church, we encourage each one another. I can't pray to God enough. So help me uh, sing together. <laughs> Your grace and mercy brought me through yes. I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you too your grace and mercy Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm leaving this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy.
like to extend a welcome to each one of our guests. I wouldn't call them visitors. Our guests from um, Living Word Ministries Church of God in Christ in Moline, Illinois. We welcome you. Uh, we, we, I know we just fellowshiped together a couple weeks ago, but we're glad to have you, even more of you here with us today. Um, at this time, if any of you would like to speak or have words, we're inviting you to. <laughs> I know we're, we're pretty much home folks amongst each other, so there's no need for that, but we do appreciate you being here. We're glad to have you all here with us today. Um, at this time, we're going to do our announcements, which there really aren't any. Just some dates to note as we await further instruction and information. So October 5th will be our Jurisdictional Sunday School Outreach. Hopefully more information will be coming with that. October 19th will be our annual setup and send off. Uh, obviously November 28th, Thanksgiving. Um, I know for the Manalo, we got some preparations for that, so more information forthcoming on that. On December 7th, our jurisdictional upper board meeting. December 25th, Christmas. December 31st, New Year's Eve. And as we are aware, um, our, our national convocation will be coming in November, and that will be November 5th through the 10th in Memphis, Tennessee, of course. Of course, that will be more information will be forthcoming on that. I think we have another announcement. I guess we might not mention the Sunday School. Today is all of those 11th anniversary of the past of this church. And we just want to ask everyone that is week if they can. You can put it on the table if you want to put something in his hand. But we just want to be a blessing to Pastor Boone. As I said earlier this morning, that he's not the type of person to come out and set up a committee to have a uh, pastor anniversary for him. And he's not the type of person until this church is built as new addition. He really wants anything at all. But we know that he is labor amongst the saints. And he, he's been there for all of us. Amen. And we're yeah. going to show him a little bit of love next week. If I just bring him a little something, if you just want to get to it in his hand or bring an offering for him, we just want to be a blessing to pass for him next Sunday. Amen. Amen. And to add to that, it is. It, it is hard to do anything for Elder Boom with regard to his past his anniversary. We kind of have to sneak and do things behind his back, <laughs> as we did for his 10th anniversary. So, I mean, we, we as Monolf know that he has been a blessing to us as a congregation. Anything that we've ever called him for, I know that we, we've had emergencies in our family. He's been, he's left his job to be there for us. So I, I know we have something to be thankful for in our, in our leader. Um, moving on, at this time we're going to have the introduction of our speaker by Evangelist Boone, followed by a selection from the choir, and then we will have our speaker. Amen. 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 I have no notes because I need no notes. <laughs> Missionary Joyce Duffy is an humble woman of God. She loves God. She loves Amen. God's people. She does whatever she can to serve. And, you know, although sometimes requirements are made of the people, her heart is compassionate. And she doesn't want to always have the people giving to her, but she wants to be able to give and to serve the people. And she recognizes that it's not about how much money we can collect, but it's about how much we can show the love of God to people and how much we can serve people and how much we can help people. Yeah. Missionary Joyce Duffy is a soft-spoken woman, but when she comes behind the pulpit, the anointing of God makes her a giant yeah. in the Lord, and she comes forth in the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I can say that because every time I have heard her speak, it has been that. And I just thank God for her um, to be a district missionary in the Hurley Bassett Senior District. It's not an easy job. You got all kinds of personalities. You got different people going different directions. But to rally all of the women together, to come together and to support her as she supports our supervisor of women of the Iowa jurisdiction, it's not an easy job. 
but she continues to go and to press because she believes that God has that mission for her and that responsibility for her. And so I honor her for that. I thank you, Missionary Duffy, for the example that you've set for me to go on even when you don't want to go on or to, to do things when you don't want to do things sometimes, but because we follow leadership. Being able to follow leadership is a blessing from God because it's easy to go your own way and do your own thing. But to say, I submit to leadership that God has placed above me and to go on in Jesus' name, that is a blessing. And so I see that in our district missionary and I thank God for her. I don't take her for granted. And I know I always treat you like you're my buddy or my friend when I see you. But I have the utmost respect for you, District Missionary Joyce Duffy. And I honor you and I thank you for being our district missionary. Because it's not an easy role to take. But you take it with grace. And so I thank God for you. And I thank God for your leadership. And we know that, you know, when we come to service and we're going to hear a speaker... We say, have your pen and your paper ready to take notes, to take notes. Well, today I say, have your phone ready to record. Because once district missionary gets going, it's gonna be too, you can't be taking no notes. Looking down at your paper and trying to write and get it all together. But you wanna be able to receive and to hear all that God has to say through her today. Amen. And it may be moving a little fast, so record it, do whatever you have to do to get the word that's going to come forth today. Because I believe that God has a word for us today. Yeah. And I'm going to share a little bit of something this missionary told me. She said, you know, I was supposed to speak today at my home church. And I had a message already ready to be spoken. But when I got the call to come over to Mount Olive, I got the graces of my pastor and the graces of my church to come over to Mount Olive. And I thought, you know what? The Lord said, that message that I have, that I was going to speak in my home church, that's not the message that God had for me to go to Mount Olive. Yeah. So we have a very special gift for us today, straight from the throne of God. Because God gave her a gift, a message for us today at Mount Olive. Not the message that she was going to bring in her church, but one that God gave specifically for us. And so I encourage you to listen, take notes if you have to, record on your phone, whatever you need to do to get the message today. God has sent us a special message today. And I thank District Missionary Duffy for being obedient and for coming and for sharing with us, for putting aside what her agenda was to come and to share with us today. Only a woman of God, a woman who loves God and who loves God's people and loves us here at Mount Olive would do that, put everything aside to come and take care of us. And so we thank God for you, Missionary Joyce Duffy. Amen. And after the choir has sang, please stand to your, your feet to receive the district missionary of the Hurley Bassett Senior District under the Iowa Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ, District Missionary Joyce Ann Duffy.
salvation. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in my life. I thank you, God, for what you're going to do, Lord. God, these are your people, Lord, the sheep of your pasture. God, I ask you to feed them today, Lord, with your word. God, I ask you to anoint your handmaiden one more time, Lord. Hide me behind the cross, Lord, and let it not be me, but let it be you. And I'll be sure, God, to give you all the praise down the glory for how excellent is your name above all the earth. I thank you, Jesus. give everybody honor where honor's due. I do give honor to Pastor Moon in this house, but I give honor to my superintendent and to Living Word and to all the saints here. I thank God for you. Without you, I couldn't be here because I'd have no one to speak to. But I thank you. I thank God for each and every one of you, and I, I praise God for this opportunity. I have one scripture that I want to read before you sit down. It said, being confident is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, he that was had begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. I want you to know when Paul wrote this, it goes along with our Sunday school lesson. He wrote this from a Philippian jail. He was not sitting in a church pew, but he was sitting in a jail. But yet he could write and encourage other people. And that's what we got to get to as Christians. We got to be able to rejoice in the Lord always and again rejoice. Now I want to slow down because missionary will write. I do go pretty fast. But um, I came out from underneath a, a lady pastor, and she was an anointed woman of God. And then the Lord sent me to Pastor Pepper's church. But I thank God I learned what the anointing was. When she got her the anointing, I thought, oh, why don't she slow down? But it was the anointing. The anointing's got some life about it, and it speeds up. And I thank you, brother, for that. So if I get too fast, just go, and maybe I'll slow yeah. down just a little. But I thank God for that testimony that Missionary Boone gave. Because you know what I read? I read a devotion. I have a devotion every morning. And it said about... We are the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But he said it's a two-way street. He's the shepherd, and but he will lead, but you must follow. Yeah. See, so when he leads, you must follow. And when I had gotten that call, um, I first of all, I said, oh, to Sister Griffin, I said, oh, I said, I already promised living word. And I don't like to go back on my word. But then something quick in my spirit said, let me call you back. I'm going to talk to my pastor and I called him and he said oh no you go over to Mount Olive and the district trumps anything we'll take care of living word mm -hmm. but he took care of living word he just brought him right with him so I thank God for that <laughs> oh you did so I thank God for that so just remember he's your shepherd but you must follow uh -huh. and then I thought well I have a message I had prepared for living word he said that's not the message for Mount Olive and don't you know, right away, he put that scripture in my heart. And then the message began to flow. Now, I went to the leadership conference, and she said, you should always have a theme and then three points that follow. And my theme is, it's a process. And what, make sure you have on the right coat, go through the process. And um, when he's begun a good work, he will finish it all the way to the end. But you have to hold on. You have to tie a knot onto that promise and hold on. Every promise we get is yes and amen, but there's a process. There's always a pro promise, a problem, and then God brings the provision. You never get to from point A to point C as fast as you think. Sometimes it could be years, and I'm talking years, but God, God made a promise. If he started that work in you, he's gonna perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So hold on because you're going to go through the process. And sometimes the process isn't easy. And I thought, well, Lord, you wrote that in the New Testament. But he also meant it for the Old Testament. The New Testament had Jesus Christ down on the inside. The Old Testament had God on the outside, which made it a lot harder. The New Testament only had two commandments. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind. And secondly, to love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, but the Old Testament had ten commandments. But see, the first four commandments were towards God. you got to get those right before you get yeah. the last commandments. Because if your relationship with God is not right, your relationship with people won't be right. Oh, but then, then last six was towards the people.
people. God cared for the people. He cared for the people more than he even cared for his son because he sent his son to deliver the people. See what kind of God we serve? And we cry about sacrifices we got to give. Look at the sacrifice he gives. Yes. Is it easy? No, because we're only in a human body and we can only go so far. So we got to pray just a little bit longer, Jesus, because we got to go through the process and we don't know how long the process is. And that's the same way it was. I'll take you to Joseph. Oh, he was a man of God, but he had God on the outside, but not God on the inside because Jesus had not died yet. But he had him on the outside and he had a relationship. You can have that relationship, but it's up to you. How much do you want to give of yourself to have that relationship? Oh, there's a price for the anointing. Salvation is free, but the anointing is going to cost you something. You see people, they get up with the anointing. I promise you they paid a price, and they went through the process. And Joseph went through the process. Yeah. Oh, things started out really good for Joseph. He was the 11th of 12 brethren, and he was well loved of his father. He was favored by his father so much that God made Joseph, um, Israel, made him a favorite coat, and he put the coat on him. And I also want to tell you this. Got to keep your coat on, but be careful who puts the coat on you. Oh, he put the coat on him, and that coat, he caused him to think he was better than his brethren. And then the Lord gifted him with dreams. Oh, dreams. And he began to tell his brethren about the dreams that he had. And the first dream he had, he dreamed that, behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and the sheep and my sheaves rose up and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves round about made obeisance to me. And I looked up what that word obeisance meant. So you gotta look up words, what they mean. It says show respect or submission. But the problem is you can't demand respect, you have to earn respect. Oh, that's what he didn't realize. He had not earned that respect yet. You can't come in as a newbie and think everybody's going to bow down. And, oh, no, it don't work like that. you got to work your way up. you got to start from the bottom on up. you got to learn to serve before people will serve you. You can't. And then even when you do, the higher you go, the more you serve, the more they require out of you. Not only serve, but more financially require out of you, too. Let me drop that in there. Oh, but then the second dream he had, he had a dream that the sun and the moon and the stars were going to bow down to him. This time his father, he told his father, and he, his father rebuked him, and his brothers envied him. Oh, little did he know he was going to start going through the process. See, Joseph had a high call, but he wasn't ready for that calling yet. Joseph was going to not, people weren't going to serve him. He was going to serve them. That's what a first true servant does. They realize that I'm not here for people to serve me, but I'm here to serve them. And so things had turned around for Joseph. What happened? His father told him, he said, go out into the field and see what your brother are doing. And the Bible said before that he brought an evil report. I looked that up. So you got to look things up. It said that he kind of exaggerated a little. See, you got to tell it the way it is. Don't add to or take away. So that was something the Lord needed to trim out of Joseph. You got to realize that when you start going through the process, everybody has a purpose. God wants to use everybody, but not everybody's going to be used at the same level. And so they all have to go through the process. And he began to, um, the Lord had to trim that exaggeration. So what did he do when his brother said, oh, here comes that dreamer again. This time we'll get rid of him. Oh, and then Reuben delivered him out of his head because they wanted to kill him. And then Judah, now listen to this. These two men were mentioned, Reuben and Judah, because everybody can change. You say, oh, people, people can't change. I can't forgive. Oh, everybody can change after a time. But time brings about a change. Age brings about maturity. They just weren't mature enough yet. And Reuben delivered him out of his hand, and Judah said, let's put him down into the well where there was no water because he didn't want to kill him. And then Reuben thought, well, I'll go back later and save him. But see, Reuben only, his father had said, you're as unstable as water. What was he saying? When the water was frozen, it stays one way. But then when 
it's unstable, it can go anywhere. Reuben conformed to the what was ever going around at the time. He didn't make a stand, and he was the oldest, and he should have made a stand and protected his brother, but he didn't. But little did he know, he Joseph was starting to go through the process. That very thing that they hated in Joseph, God was going to get out of Joseph. Yeah. See, the very thing that caused contention is sometimes that's how it with us. Some things people meet and you rub the wrong way. Well, there's something in you that maybe God needs to get out of you. It ain't always everybody else. Sometimes it's you. And so God had to change him. And so when he threw him down that well, then they sat there and ate in front of him. Oh, he begged them to take him out. Did they do it? No, they didn't do it. Why? Because he had to go through the process. And you know what happened? His coat was stripped off him. You know why that coat was stripped off him? Because his dad gave him that coat of honor. Your parents can't give you a coat of honor. Your parents can't put you in position. Just because your dad is the bishop doesn't mean that you're going to be the bishop. Just because your dad is the pastor doesn't mean that you're going to be the pastor. Just because your mother is the state supervisor doesn't mean that you're going to be the state supervisor. It's to whoever God has chosen for that position and if you are the one you will go through the process and it doesn't matter what rank you are in the family he was the youngest but see isn't that how God does the younger the younger the older shall serve the younger just like it was with his dad Jacob and Esau Esau ended up serving Jacob so history was repeating itself and that's the way history does it repeats itself so he got sold and we all know that he was taken into Egypt and then he served in Potiphar's house and what was he learning to do see before did you notice his father said go out into the field he wasn't working he was out tattling and telling what his brothers were doing that is what God wants from us. He wants us to get into a church and serve and work. And so he was learning to work. That dirty word, W-O-R-K, we got to learn to work. And, and so he was begin. he learned to work and he learned to serve. He learned to serve those that were above him and those that were under him. And that's what a true servant does. And he, and then Potiphar's wife got eyes for him. See, because before you get exalted into position, you're going to be tried. The Bible distinctly tells us in Psalms 105 and 19, until that time of the word came, the word of the Lord tried him. It was talking about Joseph. God is going to try you in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The very thing that Jesus was tried in the wilderness. After he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he overcame every one of them. Guess what Joseph did? He overcame every one of them too. When Potiphar's wife presented herself to him, he he ran out of his coat. Uh, once again, off the coat he went because there the um, king had put the coat on him. People can't put a coat on you. Only God can. So off the coat went again. He overcame the lust of the flesh. He overcame the lust of the eye. Oh, he could have lusted at her. He could have, over, he could have had a bigger position, the pride of life, but he didn't. He ran out, and then she lied on him. And, one, and then he was put down into the prison. Now, the prison there was below the king's palace. I looked it up. And so what did he do there? Once again, he learned to serve. But guess what he was doing that we learned? He was growing in his gift. You got to grow in your gift. You, you are, your gift isn't full-fledged when you first start out. you got to go through the process. Right now, I'm not like what I once used to be when I first started speaking. I have to grow in that gift. Every one of us got to grow in our gifts. I'm sure DJ didn't start out being a tremendous organist, but he is now. He had to grow in that gift. You know, Jordan didn't start out being a great drummer, but he is now because he had to grow in that gift. Pastor Boone is a good preacher, but maybe he wasn't back then, but he is now my superintendent. He was, he's a great preacher. He was a pastor, and then he became a superintendent. You got to grow in your gift, and one way to grow in your gift is to serve other people. Look out for the sheep. Take care of the welfare of 
of the sheep. And that's what Joseph was learning to do. How do you know? Because then when he was serving down there, he caught two of his friends. And he said, why are you sad today? And he said, because we dreamed a dream and there's no man to interpret it. He said, tell me the dream. What he was realizing, your gift will make room for you, but your gift is to serve others. Before he was telling the dream, now he was interpreting the dream. Before the dreams were about him, now he was interpreting the dream for someone else. He was actually helping them. And then he told them the interpretation of the dreams. One dream was good, but one dream was bad. But you have to tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. You can't yeah. just pick and choose. you got to declare the whole counsel of God. And that's what makes a good servant of God. He didn't just pick what he, he said. No, one's head's going to be lifted up, and one head's going to be lifted off. The butler was going to be lifted up, but the baker was going to be lifted. His head was going to be lifted off. And this will happen in three days. And sure enough, it happened in three days. Just as he said, see a true prophet, their words will come to pass. You can say anything all you want, but you better make sure that your words come to pass. You better make sure that you hear it from thus saith the Lord. Amen. And as he told that, and guess what? And he said, now remember me when you get out. Oh, see, we tried to get out of the frying pan too early. Joseph wasn't ready to get out of the process. He had to go on and serve two more, Bible says two more full years. So I was thinking about that this morning. It probably was from the day he interpreted that dream to the very next two few years, the same day, if you had a calendar. And then what? The king dreamed a dream. See, your gift will make room for you. God was uh -huh. beginning to make room for Joseph. But Joseph was going to come up with a whole different attitude. And then the butler said, this day I do remember my fault. And nobody can interpret that king's dream that there was going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And But he said, I remember no man. And he told him about how he had interpreted his dream and how it came to pass exact. And they said, bring him. So they shaved him. Now this is kind of funny in my research. They shaved the Egyptians' hair, all of their hair off them, and then they wore wigs. And they wore the wigs. <laughs> and I thought, what? But they wore wigs. But they said it's because those lice was so bad back then. So they shaved all their hair off, all their hair on their body, and then they wore wigs. So they shaved all his hair off, and they brought him before the king. And what did he do? He interpreted the king's dream. He says, you're going to have seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. He said, look out a man that can take care of this. He said, you are the man. And Joseph wasn't looking for a position, but God put him in position. You never go looking for a position. God will put you in position. Then guess what he gave him? Another coat. But this time he kept the coat on because God put him in the position. And he made him the second in charge of Egypt. Why the second? Because God's always first. God is the one always in command. You're always second in command. You're never first. And he then he went and he, you know the story how he saved seven years of plenty for Egypt. And then the famine struck. Oh, it struck. And the Bible says two years into the famine. And during that time, God blessed Joseph. He had two sons. One's name was Manasseh and the other name was Ephraim. One son meant forget, forget all my toils. And um, Ephraim meant fruitful. God blessed him. Oh, he blessed him. He blessed him with a wife. He married a pagan wife because that's what the king gave him. But it never took away his love for God. He always served because he had a relationship. You say, well, I can't serve God at work. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Once you've got that relationship, you can serve him anywhere. And so then it's pretty soon the famine got down in Canaan, and they had no food. And Israel, which was Jacob, told his sons, he said, go down into Egypt and get food. So the ten sons went to get food, but Benjamin stayed behind because Benjamin was his only son left of his beloved Rachel. Oh, he loved Rachel. She was beautiful. And so when he lost um, Joseph, he just had Benjamin. He said, I'll not send Benjamin. So they went. And guess who they appeared? 
appeared before Joseph. They didn't recognize Joseph. Why? Because he had changed. Yeah. Time changes. And Joseph recognized them. He had changed, but had they changed? Joseph was going to face the greatest test of all. What was it? Forgiveness. Yeah. Was he going to walk in love? Was he going to forgive? As he looked at him and he heard him, and then he accused him. He was testing him. See, you've got to forgive because if you don't forgive, God, God can't forgive you. Yeah. But he did. He looked at him and he tested him. And then he told him how many, how, he called them spies. They said, nay, we're not spies, but we're the son of one man. And there was 12 of us. One is not and one is at home. He says, you're spies, you're lying. He said, no, we're not. He said, prove if you're not spies, bring back the younger brother. But what he wanted was he wanted to see his brother. But he was testing him to see if they changed. Why was he testing him? Because the Bible tells us that you're to love your enemies. You're to bless them to curse you. You're to do good to them that hate you. You're to pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? Because he reigns on the just and the unjust just alike. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. If you want to be perfect, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do good to those that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Speak well of them, even when they curse you. you got to speak well. So Joseph was really being put to the test. Did he forgive his brethren? Oh, he had, but he wanted to see if they had changed. What am I saying? You may be holding some grudges, but you shouldn't. People can change. If you can change, they can change. Joseph had changed. They so much that they didn't recognize him. They had changed too, but he wanted to test him. So when they brought Benjamin, they told their dad, they said, Dad, we got to take him. And the first the dad wouldn't do it. And then Reuben stepped up. He said, Dad, slay my two sons. But he said, if we don't bring him back, what he had been willing to see, this was the same man that he had tried to do it before, but this time he stood up, he gave his own, was willing to give his own son. But then Judah spoke up, the man that put him down in the pit. He said, Dad, if I don't bring back Benjamin, I'll forever, I'll bear, bear the blame. And so finally he let him go. Those two men had changed. God had changed them. And God can change anyone. We've got to love them to wholeness. You won't get anywhere not doing stuff for people. you got to love them to wholeness. He passed the greatest test of all was love and forgiveness. And then we know what he did. He set them each. When he brought them in the second time, he fixed them a meal. After he had sent them back and he put all their money back in their bags. And the father said, you take the money back and double. And so he did. And then what did he do? When he sent him back again, he sent Benjamin back, but he put the silver cup because he really wanted to bring him back again. And then he was going to, they wanted to kill um, Simeon, whatever, offer his own life. He said no. So he took them all back, and then he fixed them a meal. And he set them at the table by their birthright. And then when he gave them their food, they gave, he gave Benjamin five times more. He was seeing it, that jealousy was still there from the, for the younger brother. They didn't say a word. Yeah. And then he ordered them all out, and he wept. He said, I am Joseph. See, they didn't recognize Joseph because he had changed, but they had changed too. What are you saying? If I could leave anything with you, first of all, put on the right coat and make sure that God's putting the coat on you. And always be second in command, never first. And then finally, just remember that people can change. You have to forgive, and you have to forget. I'll tell you what the Lord showed me. I said one day I was at home, and I said, Lord, it's the memories I was missing my husband. He said, make new memories. He said, make new memories. And then you know what you're doing? When you're praying for people, when you're loving your enemy, you're making new memories. New memories to what that enemy did to you. By doing them good, you're making new memories. 
But when they're saying bad things about you, you're blessing them. You're making new memories. New memories are getting etched in your mind. New memories to change your attitude. New memories, that's what God's saying. Make new memories. Don't keep those old memories. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward to those things which are before. You can't go forward if you keep holding on to the old memories. God wants to use you. He's got a great call, but he can't bring you, do it, unless you go through the process. He can't exalt you until you learn that your gift is not for you, but it's to serve other people. Oh, he's got a great call, but you got to realize you're not down here for yourself. And he said you so you want to be perfect, even as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Who is our greatest example of perfection? Our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say on the cross? For Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You say, oh, I can't forgive. But let me tell you about a man. Let me tell you about a man that was beaten 39 times with strife, where his flesh was whipped off his body. Let me tell you about a man that they plucked all the hairs out of his beard. Let me tell you about a man that they took a crown and put it on his head until the blood rushed out. Let me tell you about a man that carried the cross and couldn't even carry it and someone else had to carry it. Let me tell you about a man, a man that died on the cross. You say, I can't forgive. Oh, you can't forgive. I can't Joseph, but I love the way Mother how you talked about them brothers. 
how they had to go through the process too. Because everybody had to have some forgiveness eventually. But it showed us all that we all have what? Something in us. Something in us that only God can work out. God is the only one that can work it out of us. Amen. And if we're not willing to go through the process, if we're not willing to make the change, if we're not willing to allow God to do it, shame on us. Because we're going to be that one that when he comes back, we're going to be the hung around the church. We're going to be the done all these things in the church. And we're going to be that one that leaves sad. Because he's going to tell us, I never knew you. And we don't want that to be us. We don't want that to be us. So at this time, amen, we're going to ask Mother Griffin, amen, she would have a word of prayer. Because we need it.